One thing that I've gone through is cycles of depression, of burnout, of not feeling very motivated. So I was talking to a buddy of mine who was going through some of this with his business. What I came up with, what I was telling him is I was like, you know what? It's not hard work that hurts an entrepreneur, that causes an entrepreneur to be fatigued. It is A lot of times we have the best intentions in life and we even know what to do, but we screw up. We don't get to our goals. We don't achieve our goals. The big reason for that is because we end up making bad judgment calls. We all have really poor judgment. Our judgment is not as good as what we'd like it to be. So if given the choice between eating cake and eating something healthy, you're probably going to choose cake. Now you can use your willpower to overcome your bad judgment, but it's only going to be useful in circumstances where you're in the right state of mind. If I put you in the wrong state of mind, I can make your judgment bad. All I have to do is have something that's up your life, put you in a bad mood, make you sick, make you hungry, make you tired, make you depressed, and you're gonna automatically start making bad decisions. You're gonna take the easy route in life, not the route that you want to take to accomplish your goals. I want you to take a moment to think about bad decisions that you've made. No one forced you to make those decisions. You're the one who did that. What we can do instead of that, it really relies on us eliminating our judgment calls, eliminating decisions from our life as much as possible. That's the key. The more that you eliminate these decisions, the less everything points that you'll have. The more decisions you make in life, the more chances that you can make a mistake. If you have played poker, every time that you have a chance of making a decision, you have a chance of making a wrong decision. So if you can make it so that your opponent has to make more decisions, then you're going to be more successful because they're going to likely make wrong decisions. The person that has to make the most decisions is the person that's going to lose. The person that doesn't have to make decisions because they already know what to do or they're not forced to the point of making decisions, they're going to win just by virtue of the fact that eventually you're going to make enough bad decisions or you're going to make one really bad decision that's going to f*** everything up. So you want to eliminate those decisions as much as possible. So I was talking to a buddy of mine. What I came up with, what I was telling him is I was like, you know what? It's not hard work that hurts an entrepreneur that causes an entrepreneur to be fatigued. It is decision making. It's decision making. You're going to be fatigued if you're constantly going back and forth. And this is how most entrepreneurs work and why they're not successful. They decide, okay, I should work on this today. And they start working on this. Halfway through the day, they're like, oh, wait a minute, I should do this. They check some email, they see something, they decide they need to do this other thing. So they start doing this other thing. And they're constantly switching. And every day they're doing new tasks. I should do some marketing. I should write blog posts or I should do YouTube videos. And they don't have a real plan and a real schedule. And they're trying to do all kinds of stuff to figure out what is going to work. And it fatigues you greatly because there's a huge difference between working for someone and working for yourself. And the big difference is who gives the direction. If you give me a job, and you tell me what tasks you need me to do, I'll do those tasks and I can get that shit done. I can be the boss. I can tell other people what they need to do. I can check on them. I can get their reports. I can manage them and I can decide what tasks that they need to do. The difficulty comes when you mix the two. When you're working for yourself, when you're an entrepreneur, you have to wear two hats. The one hat is the decision maker, the boss hat. And the second hat is the hat of the actual doer, the worker, the implementer, the person doing the work. Now the problem becomes switching between those hats and that's where this fatigue comes in. What you really need to do, the solution for this, is this. You put on the hat one at a time. So you put on the decision-making hat, the boss hat, and you keep that hat on and you plan out your week. I put on the decision-making hat ahead of time and I tell myself what I'm gonna do and I know what the tasks are gonna be so that when I go to sit down at my desk on a given day, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do and I just put on the worker hat and I just work through all that stuff. Now, the worker, what does the worker do? The worker does the work. When you're wearing the worker hat, you've already got the tasks set out for you and you just execute and do the work. As the worker, you don't know why the manager decided to make this plan. You just got the orders and you need to do this. It might not make sense to you. As you're doing the work, you might say, this doesn't make sense. This is too hard. I don't feel like doing this. It doesn't matter. You do the work. You trust the process. You trust that when you had the manager hat on and you plan this out, that you did a good job of planning it out and you need to now just execute on this. You don't get to question it. So for example, right now I'm wearing the worker hat. I'm not planning this out. I have it on my board. I have my schedule of what I'm doing today. The thing that came up on my schedule was record a video, one on mindset. 
that's what I'm doing. I'm not questioning whether I should be doing this. I'm not questioning if there's something better that I could be doing. I'm not questioning how I'm doing it or what the topic was. I already decided what the topic was gonna be. I already drew the outline for this and I am going to execute on this right now. I'm just gonna do what I told myself to do, what the manager told me. Do, do not question the work. And this is the hard part. This is where you get screwed up. Is you come up with a plan for your life and you say you're gonna do this and you say you're gonna to commit to doing this thing. And then when you get to actually doing the work, you're in the middle of that eight mile run you're supposed to run today. And at mile five, you're like, I'm not really feeling it today. Maybe I should just do six that you don't get to do just six you've planned out eight you need to do eight you don't get to question it even if it makes you tired as hell and it's miserable you just do the work that is set out for you I can give you a little story a little example from my life in this last week I got knee in the ribs busted up some ribs I could hardly run but you know what I said to myself I said you know what, John it doesn't matter do you see on that calendar that you have mother that's what I said. I said, it says run 15 miles. It doesn't say if your ribs are okay. It says run 15 miles, mother And so I told myself, I said, you know what, John? You're gonna do it because that is on the calendar. That is what you're supposed to do. And then finally, you wanna use your feedback to modify the plan. So I've come up with some pretty stupid plans in my life. I don't get to quit those plans just because I came up with those plans. At one point, I was recording Pluralsight courses and at one point I made the plan. I was like, okay, it's going really well. So I made the plan for the week. I was like, I should do one course a week. I'll do five modules. I'll do one course a week. That's a lot of work. And I committed to it and I planned it out. And you know what? It was a shitty plan. That's way too much work. Doing one course every two weeks was what my average was. And that was still a lot of work. But doing one course in one week, ridiculous. All right. So what did I do? Did I give up? Did I say, oh, this is a shitty plan? No, I was wearing the worker hat. So what did I do with the worker hat is I said, well, the boss is a idiot but I'm gonna do the work anyway and I did the work in one week I did one course in one week it took me like 80 hours I was just working like a dog I was not sleeping but I got it done and you know what I did right after that I modified the plan because it was a very shitty plan but I didn't violate this manager and worker role because I know how important that was I need to be able to trust myself when I tell myself I'm gonna do something I'm gonna do it so I executed the plan as stupid as it was and then I modified the plan when I put back on the manager hat one week I commit to running 10 miles every single day and that was stupid <laughs> but I just gritted through it for that week and then did it and then I said all right let me adjust this running the same amount 10 miles every single day is not smart but I made myself do what I committed to I can give you one more example here. When I wrote my first book, when I wrote Soft Skills, I planned out to do a chapter a day. There's like 76 chapters in the book. That was my plan and I executed that plan. The publisher at the time, they're like, oh, you, you can't get a book written in two months. It's, it's not possible. Most authors take like six months or a year to write their book. And I was like, no, I can get it done in two months because I have a plan. I know exactly what I'm doing every single day. I've got it planned out. It will take me two months to write this book. I gave them the exact date which I would deliver the finished product of that book and I delivered it a couple of days ahead of time because I had the plan and I stuck to the plan. I made those decisions ahead of time and I was able to be extremely productive to do something that I wouldn't normally be able to do. If I just sat down like most authors that write a book and said, you know what, I should write today and I didn't have a plan of what days I was going to write what chapters. I would not deliver that book nearly as fast as I did when I had the plan, when I knew what chapters I was gonna write every single day. So guys, this is it. This is a very, very powerful framework for succeeding in life. If you do this, if you eliminate judgment calls, if you make plans ahead of time, you're gonna get a ton of stuff done. You're gonna make a lot of strides. You're not gonna need as much willpower. You're gonna see that you're gonna be being superhuman when you've already decided what you're gonna do and then you just execute on that plan and you don't get to question it, you don't get to reevaluate it and then eventually what you're gonna do is you're gonna come back, put on the manager hat, evaluate the results and you're gonna rejigger the plan. That's the key, that's it. Hey guys, if you found this video valuable, make sure you watch this one next, okay? Uh, knowing the two hat strategy is great and all, but if you can't actually get stuff done in the worker mode, you're just setting yourself up for a vicious cycle of losing trust in yourself. Here are 10 guaranteed mind tricks to work without motivation, which you'll inevitably run out of at some point. Talk soon.